I've come to the conclusion that honestly video game journalists are cowards. On YouTube, on GameSpot, IGN, there are countless personalities, uh, kind of funny, all these people. All of them have a following, they have their audience, they have a great deal of respect in the community. But what I find is none of them really stand for anything. Have you ever noticed that all the really big angry Joes and PewDiePies, they are nothing more than personalities as hollow as the president. They serve God knows what purpose to me personally. Because frankly, I don't take anything they have to say as valuable, honestly. Uh, when I look at PewDiePie, I see a white male who fits the sort of target demographic that girls find cute. And that other boys think is funny because he makes a lot of noises and these stupid faces. Uh, with Angry Joe, I guess because he screams every now and then, he's relatable to those gamers that rage and scream into microphones and call people pussies and faggots. I find that these people offer nothing. After the whole Witcher 3 debacle with Nvidia and finding out that the driver support for the Keplers was non-existent, and NVIDIA, even on their own forms, have come out and said, yes, we kind of neglected the Kepler, and then later on deleted their own messages. The sad fact that there are pages and pages every day, there are thousands of comments. People are affected by this on a mass scale, yet Tech of Tomorrow does nothing. Covers nothing, says nothing. Linus Tech Tips says nothing. Paul's Hardware. Jay's Two Cents. All these guys that are big names in computer gaming don't have an opinion and don't say anything. I find it disgusting. I mean, really, these guys could truly make the movement step to the next level. And instead, they drop the ball and continuously work on whatever it is, whatever fantastic sample or product they have. Ooh, an unboxing of something really expensive that you probably can't buy, but you can watch us play with it and enjoy it. Hmm. Then we'll do our WAN show where we'll touch on some subjects that really are irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. I don't know. After really thinking about this, I became upset. I also noticed that the major gaming journalists on GameSpot and IGN have nothing to say. No opinions, no words, and if you say anything, they ignore it. You know, you know what we need? We need more comparison videos. That's it. More PC versus PlayStation and Xbox. That's what we need. In a day and age where video game fucking websites are just dying for some news, they're dying for news so bad, they sit there and tell us about Kanye West making a video game about his mother going to heaven. But this, this is actually an issue that affects the gaming community. You know, NVIDIA purposely putting on drivers that don't work well with the Keplers to make the 900 Maxwell series seem better. The, NVIDIA's game works being a problem for AMD users. Like, this they don't touch. But you can have them tell you about how great 4K is. Thanks. Thanks a lot, GameSpot, because I'd have, uh, I would have never known 4K would look really good without you telling me. God, video game journalists are cowards. They really are. It reminds me of the 25 invi invisible benefits of gaming while being male. Ridiculous. There are no invisible benefits of gaming while being male. Here's the benefit of gaming, period. It gets you out of reality. Instead of attacking video games especially male gamers we should be treating video games like the art form they are because frankly the other the only other alternative a young kid has to escape reality no matter how grim whether male or female if it isn't a video game it'll be alcohol and drugs and i think we need to keep that in focus instead of this weird sort of feminist movement where there's some blame on a fucking patriarchy and attacking male gamers at every fucking turn in today's day and age in this society where frankly everywhere you turn media is telling you that you need to change or improve something about yourself to make yourself more attractive or more likable it is on both sides of the fucking spectrum i can't go down an aisle without seeing men's health magazine hearing about how sexy some guy is whether it's johnny depp or fucking the guy who played wolverine or the dude who played thor you know i have to live with it too just as women do but you don't see me blaming women 
well, always remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and then like and all that other stuff, or dislike, I don't know. Apparently, whether you like or dislike my videos, it apparently affects YouTube or in some way where they'll make me more visible. And let's face it, I'm beginning to think that YouTube needs a guy who is honestly more willing to be articulate with his views. Frankly, I'm verbally dexterous, but I will admit staring at this record button is slightly intimidating. And I will also make note that you will never find me to be a bellicose man in nature. All those big words you can find by Googling. I'm America's version of Russell Brand, except I don't have a charming British accent and chicks don't want to do me.